Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the College Football Show on the Sports Talk Line Network, where we talk sport 24-7, 365. I come to you live from the couch again. Guys, I'm your host, Spinksy. This is the 23rd episode of the College Football Show. Thanks for tuning in again this week. If you're a first time here, hit that subscribe button, like, rate, review, comment, all that stuff. We know what you're going to do, folks. Come say hi on Twitter at SpinksyCFB. Tell me you love the show. Tell me you hate it. Let's just interact a bit. If you ever want to come on the show, guys, you know where to find me at the same spot, Spinksy CFB. Come along. I'm always on there. As you may know, guys, we're trying to go to two shows a week. I I dropped the ball this week. It was my birthday on the weekend, and I had a few too many beverages on several days, and I stretched the ride out. So I'd like to apologize for not being on the show twice this week, but this show is going to be jam-packed, so let's go. If this is your first time here, I'm an LSU t- Tigers fan, and the reason I'm not wearing their shirt this week is because I'm disgusted at the performance they've stuck in on defense this year thus far. We'll get to that after, but at the moment, I want to talk about the news of the week. So at the moment, guys, looks like the LSU Florida match has been postponed this week due to COVID. The Gators have had uh, five or six guys, including staff, test positive for COVID. That game's been moved to the 12th of December. So unfortunate for SEC fans who were possibly going to see two teams, even though they were coming off a loss last week, two teams who were going to go at each other for the full four quarters, which would have been really good to see. Unfortunately, that match has moved, so just look forward to that in your calendar as the year goes on. In other news, it looks like um, Alabama head coach Nick Saban has also tested positive for COVID. Uh, unfortunate news for the 69-year-old. Um, I'm not sure what happens now with the Georgia-Bama game this weekend. Arguably the biggest game of the season so far, at least. Um, possibly in the whole season, this, these two teams are electric and it should have been an incredible matchup. At the moment, the game is on still for Saturday. We'll see what happens as the days go on. Um, but at the recording of this show, the game is on still. So we'll, st- we'll see what happens with that, folks. But stay tuned to Twitter. Uh, all the um, all your socials, they'll be on there for sure. I guarantee it. All right, let's get into the games of the week. Um, Texas A&M and Florida Gators match up. Um, Florida, you should have you should have walked away with this with an easy win. Um, at the time, they were ranked fourth. I've now slipped out to the top ten. Um, they ended up going down forty-one to thirty-eight to Texas A&M. Um, Kyle Trask threw uh, twenty-three of thirty-two for three hundred and twelve yards and rushed for a touchdown himself. It, the the Gators weren't bad, and the the Aggies were just on their game this week for the first time in ages. And um, the Aggies have been. Been taking a bit of a backward step the last few weeks, and people have been calling for the coach's head. And the Aggies are doing terrible. They've been getting pumped a few times, but this week they really come out and show the Gators what kind of football team they actually are. Which is a shame because the Gators could have been that third SAT team in the top four this year if it went the way that we thought that it actually would. However, now they've had their setback against AM and they've dropped outside the top 10. Congratulations to Texas A&M. It's nice of you guys to actually have a win over a decent outfit for a change. It's been a long time, so. All right. Here it is. LSU Tigers went down to Missouri. Yeah. 45-41. to 41. Um, Miles Brennan, the LSU quarterback, is really starting to find his feet now. In the first few opening games, um, first few games, he was sort of struggling a bit to sort of get rid of the football and when he, he when he sort of needed to or go to ground. Those things you kind of pick up throughout a few games or throughout your history. But he's fi- starting to find his feet now. And offensively, Alice, you're fine. But nothing wrong with it at all. Defensively, they've welcomed back Bo Pelini as a defensive coach. That's right. The guy who was good 10 years ago, they've welcomed him back, thinking that he'll still be good now. He is trash. Bo Pelini needs to get fired now, and this show will stand up and bang the table for Bo Pelini to be fired right now. I would take a Cowboys, a Dallas Cowboys defensive uh, DC over Bo Pelini. This is disgusting. 
They leaked nearly 600 yards up on offense, on, on defense. All I wanted for my birthday was an LSU win. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. And you know what I got? A 45-41 to 41 loss to Missouri. That is disgusting. That is not what I wanted. That's, what, that's not what anyone wanted. I didn't want to talk about that, their record. I think this is the first time they've been under 500 to, to open the season since like 2001. It, it is disgusting. A lot needs to change. I, I never thought they'd repeat back-to-back champions. That's never going to happen in this era and losing so many guys. That's never going to happen. But the fact that you can't stick a, a good enough a performance against Missouri is disgusting. Now we have to wait until next year to beat them again. Far out. Anyway, Georgia had a big win over Tennessee, which was nice. Um, Georgia quarterback Stetson, Stetson Bennett is really starting to find his feet. Um, JT Daniels is still still sort of there or thereabouts. He's still trying to rehab. He's not quite ready yet. But Stetson seems to be doing a good enough job. Defensively, Georgia are unbelievable. One of the best defenses I've seen in a very, very long time. That's why I was hoping their matchup with Alabama this weekend would still go ahead because Georgia Bama would be a cracker. But hopefully we'll see. Hopefully that hopefully it does, but only only time will tell. Auburn gets a nice win over Arkansas. Um, again, that should have been a bit tighter, but Auburn um, Auburn uh, Auburn shouldn't have won. Auburn should have won by a lot more. It shouldn't have been that tight, but Auburn gets away with the win, which is okay for them. Alabama continues to roll through every opponent they face, this time against Ole Miss. 111 points total in this match. Very strange. Um, Alabama are used to scoring, but they're not used to leaking this much on, on defense. So I think they're having the same hiccups that LSU seem to be having at the moment. Um, Bama will... So- obviously tightened that up, and they're continuing to win games, unlike their SEC rival. So, not good. Notre Dame is back in the back in the spotlight again. Nice of them. Um, they've had a week or two off, I think, and they're now coming back to win their third game, so they're now 3-0 with an easy win over Florida State. Well, the Miami Hurricanes are who we thought they were. Trash. I sat here last week and told you that the Hurricanes would cover the spread of 14 and a half. Not only would they do that, they would win against the Clemson Tigers. I'm sorry for, if, for anyone who listened to me. <sighs> Turns out the Hurricanes are exactly who we thought they were. They're an average ACC outfit at best. Derry King had us thinking that they were uh, they were an electric offense. It turns out they're not. They were crap on offense and crap on defense, and they need to go back to the drawing board again. They will not be playing in an ACC championship game, I guarantee it. It's unfortunate. Right. Those of you who have seen this show in the past, you know I banged the table for the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers, my new favorite Sunbelt team, to be ranked. They were 3-0 going into this week's matchup, which has moved to this morning, my time over here. They were playing the Louisiana Raging Cajuns, also from the Sun Belt, and the AP25 decided that they would rank the Louisiana Raging Cajuns instead of the Chanticleers. And what happened this morning? The Chanticleers got a win. That is right. That for the first time in their history since 2003 when they formed, the first time in their history they beat a top 25 team in the Louisiana Raging Cajuns. The Chanticleers need to be ranked this week. I'm banging the table for it again. If this does not happen, I will stick out an official complaint. This has now turned into the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers podcast. That's what it is. Every single week, I want to give you guys updates on exactly how they're going. I'm trying to get their quarterback back on the show, Grayson McCall. What a fantastic name. That kid hopefully will be on the show with me really soon, guys. Can't wait. They won. Had a nice win. This game was tit for tat. All game, back and forth, back and forth. And the Chanticleers got a field goal at the very end. Uh, the kid's name was Massimo Biscardi. What a fantastic name, Massimo Biscardi. Congratulations, mate. You will be the talk of the town. All right, guys. In, uh, only a few more things I'm going to talk about, and then we're out of here. Uh, we're back again, back again in a few more days' time after the round of college football. As we spoke about earlier, a few more games are getting postponed as we speak. Um, check your local listings. T- 
see what's actually out there at the moment. Um, there seems to be a lot going on. You seem to be having football now almost every every day of the week with the NFL and the college game and every every everything else going on. So it'll be interesting to see what actually games actually come out this week. A uh, few of the big name SEC games obviously will be postponed or won't have head coaches there at the moment, but we'll see how that goes. There's not too many big games to write home about this week. It's kind of like week one, week two, where you don't have those huge matchups against your division rivals. We seem to be in a bit of a lull this weekend. If obviously with the LSU Florida game being moved and the Bama Georgia game under a dark uh, cloud of COVID at the moment. So um, all I can say is guys, the wait and see. Whatever you're doing this weekend, stay safe. Look after each other. If you're going out, wear a mask. It costs you nothing. It's easy. It doesn't matter. Right? You're not going to get sicker. If you wear the mask, it's okay. All right? Whatever you do, look after yourselves and have fun. Hooroo.